All right, so here's the deal. I got a beautiful Saturday morning. I'm not having to work at the day job. Race season is over. I got something I need to deal with. I should have dealt with it last year, but I was so busy with a new coil build and having my shoulder repaired and stuff, I couldn't get to it. But we've got to deal with it before we go to putting the new engine back together and doing the Camaro for Rachel or any of that stuff. There's a spoiler right here, so I'm gonna tell you, my trailer is actually a boat trailer. I built this thing for pennies on the dollar. Well, I take that back. My stepfather, Pop, he found this trailer for me and came and bought the steel and brought it home and said, okay, we've got a trailer. Because when I first started back into racing, I didn't have anything. When I say we build everything, we build everything. I want to show y'all, we got to do a modification because this trailer, we did a great job on it. It pulls the car great, but it's not quite right. This episode, we're going to tear it back down. We're going to update it so you can see exactly how we turned a boat trailer into a race car trailer and why they work so well for doing that. So y'all stick around. Let's check this out. I want to show you what's going on with this trailer. When we built this trailer right here, the way that these leafs work on it, and this is all the original to the trailer when it was built for a boat, it's got a long extension in the middle right here. And these axles are sitting way down off of the frame of it. And that was probably for it to get keel clearance for the boat itself and the, the motor or whatever was on the back. Um, but I didn't realize it. But the deck of my trailer is high. And we had already committed and we're building it. Couldn't do a lot about it at the time. We put a, a pretty good dovetail on the trailer. And then I put a four foot gate on the back as well to create a long ramp. On the front up here in order to run the trailer level, you see I've got my hitch actually flipped upside down running my ball high instead of my ball low. My trailer is sitting higher than what it needs to. And I've been putting this off, I wanted to do it last year, but um, anyway, I need to flip my boards anyway in the trailer. And so that needs to be done just from a maintenance standpoint, you know, go through my bearings, the whole nine yards. And I said, you know what, we're going to go ahead. We're going to get the trailer up, get it up on blocks and stuff, pull everything. And we're going to go ahead and lower this trailer. The, and we'll show you exactly how we turned this boat trailer. And you'll see it whenever we get these boards out, then it becomes obvious that it was a boat trailer. All right, let's get busy. that you bolt on welded it down to the center beam i'll have to clean that up after get the boards out and put another one on y'all see there's not much back air of course i don't carry a load on the back of it i just load the car so the whole idea of my trailer here was is the building as light as possible um, to pull it with a half ton truck you know long distances lightweight um lighter trailer is the safer right so that's what's going on there i think i can paint this and flip it over and go another couple years with it so that piece of plywood that i was using right there was a three quarter inch cd and i think i'm gonna paint that with some latex paint soak it down real good along the edges and everything i think i can flip it over and i can go several more seasons with it before it gives up but yeah i got my runners right in here just as far as for the tires this piece right here is just so that when we're sitting on it or throw something back there or whatever you know that it's not collapsing it so that's what's going on with the back now 
I gotta get my cap out right here and I think I'm gonna have to take a torch and cut this out because that weld right there, I can't get in there with a with a cutoff wheel. I can get that in with a cutoff wheel, but if I got the torch out, I might as well just torch both of them. I'm not far from needing some gas. I'm about to have some gas this winter. All we got to do, I'll be out. I need the least bottle. I used to much. paint this trailer while I got the boards out and everything this it will there it goes so that's all that's how you put the boards in a trailer like that I see a lot of guys that'll take and you know they'll have these and then they'll run bolts through all of these boards and do all kind of stuff like that and that's not the way your normal utility trailers and stuff are done you slide the boards in you put the cap on because you're supposed to flip these boards every so often anyway. These boards will cup over time. And so like with us, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take every one of these boards and I'm probably gonna take some, some used motor oil and I'm gonna take a rag and I'm gonna rub this side down. And then that way when I flip them over, you know, the bottom side, I'll have some oil. So I'll oil them and then flip them over. I won't oil the top. <laughs> I don't like getting up under the car working on it and getting oil all over my back, but I will oil the bottoms. This, uh, the bottoms now, they were oiled originally. Of course, all of that will be gone soaked in, but that's how I normally do them. I think what I'm gonna do is stack all these boards to the side. I'm not gonna lay them in the yard because it's gonna be raining and stuff and I don't want to get all warped up. So I think what I'll do is, is I'll just leave them on the trailer and work and probably paint, do what I gotta do and just move the boards around. Probably just be a lot easier to do that. But you see how it works. Nothing to it. And if I can get this one, there it goes. Out of that e -box. So can you see it now? You see that it was originally a boat trailer? See where I've got this big channel? right here that runs and I left the original channels in them because that's the integrity, that's the strength of this trailer. You see, I got two big ones going across right here. You know, the original V coming up, it's great big galvanized C channel. So this whole trailer, originally, this was a boat trailer. Um, my stepfather, Galen Austin, that's my original sponsor right there. Me and him go all the way back to the late 90s, early 2000s racing. And uh, anyway, uh, when I got back into racing six or seven years ago, Pop was helping me um, get everything sorted out and going. We had nothing. And the biggest problem, biggest challenge we had, we were building the car. You know, we built from scratch. And uh, I was like, I don't have a trailer. I don't have, how are we going to go racing? We don't have a trailer. Well, the problem is, is that street stocks require extended width trailers. So you can't just go find a utility trailer. Most utility trailers are only going to be six foot wide at the most. You can't load the street stock race car on them. Uh, most street stocks, you're looking at, you know, 78, 82 inch wheelbase, you know, 84 inch wheelbase. You know, if you get really extreme with really wide, you know, 10, 12 inch wheels and stuff. And so it's a problem. And uh, a really cost efficient solution is a used boat trailer because there are, you know, tr boat trailers can very easily outlast the boats themselves and they're just all over the place you you know you find them they're sitting in people's backyards you know they're on facebook marketplace and and different stuff and uh pop ran across this trailer sitting in somebody's yard and asked about it and got it bought it for two hundred dollars and it's all galvanized it was originally a saltwater trailer most of them aren't galvanized unless they're like salt water well this was a saltwater trailer it was for a really big boat um, I looked up the original tag on the trailer 
and the axles for it, like 3,500 pound axles. That's an important point. Um, you know, you gotta check your axle ratings because if you're hauling a 3,000 pound car, you really need more than 2,000 pound axles. Because, uh, you know, you think, well, 2,000 pound axles, well, that's 4,000 pounds. And, you know, if my trailer weighs 1,000, 1,500 pounds, well, I'm okay. Well, no, you're not. Because you load everything up and you might be all right on flat ground or whatever, but the first time you hit a speed bump that you don't see at speed or, you know, you go over a bridge, it's got a, a, an embutment that you jump over, you know, where that it joins onto the road, anything like that, you're going to bend an axle. Um, so you really need to be overweight by several thousand pounds. So like these are 3,500 pound axles right here. But the deal with the boat trailers is, is that it's real easy to find extended width axles. So these axles right here, hub face to hub face are 96 inches. And you know, this would be a purpose built car hauler trailer to have a trailer, you know, to have an axle that's that wide. And y'all know now you're looking at $2,000 up for anything open trailer, you know, that's a car hauler for race cars and stuff. So 96 inches face to face, it allowed me to build a trailer that inside wall to inside wall was 84 inches. And that's just what the original, you know, trailer was on both sides. Um, so there's some big advantages if you can get out there and hunt and find one of these. We spent $200 for the trailer. We spent another $200 on, you know, two by two angle iron um, to just make the top cap. And that, that's square tubing on the top cap right there. I don't technically need the top cap on this trailer because the original frame is beefy and designed to hold the weight. But I use it for utility purposes as well. All right. And so we did, we put the top cap on and it beefs it up. It does. It's, this trailer is really beefy. Um, but we tried not to add too much weight. I added an extra piece of angle down here just in case I had set something heavy right here on this back. To be honest, like I'm looking at where I didn't, I don't think I needed it. I think these two by two by 332nd were just plenty. And you see where I just ribbed across here and I just sliced notch through and put them on the front where they just sat over the V. Works great. You know, the back of it, we cut, made a dovetail on it. I did the dovetail originally because it was high. I say I've got to lower this trailer now, but uh, it's an option. You know, you're looking to, you know, you need a trailer um, and your budget's really tight and you've got a welder and you're industrious and you know how to do this stuff. Start looking for used boat trailers because it is a very viable option. We did it and we've reworked this trailer one time. I mean, honestly, you know, putting the lights and the wiring and, you know, the back on it. I've got a winch on the front and everything. And I guarantee you, I still don't have, you know, $1,000 in this trailer, you know, it's in, in its entire life. And that probably includes the tires and everything. Um, I put one set of brakes on it uh, that on the front axle, I put one set of brakes. And I think I got the, the hub faces and stuff to put the brakes on on Amazon for maybe your $50 or $60 for the set super cheap works great all right so that's the detail there now i'm going to take i'm going to re-drill this center to raise that pivot point up in the middle where i lower this down that way i can flip the ball over on my truck as well and then once we get the whole trailer sitting down lower then we'll look at the dovetail here i'm gonna have to rip that dovetail loose and i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rip partially down and leave the bottom attached and then just bend the whole thing up and then weld it back together i think that's going to be the easiest way to do that but we got to get this done first i took both sides out left the jack down on the front to keep the trailer level and i'm all the way you see my leaves, I'm all the way up and I'm sitting on the bottom of the frame right here. And you see, I've still got, you know, lots. I've got at least two inches here. Still got a lot of room for the tires and everything, but I can't run it this way because the springs would work on the shackles, so to speak. But um, I won't get my, le uh, my level loading between my two axles here. So as you go over hills and bumps and stuff, the center link pivots back and forth and it lets your axles roll over obstacles and stuff and maintain even loading between them if you deadhead that against the frame like that each one of these axles 
at times will carry the entire load of the trailer without being able to spread it to the other one. So like when you go over a bump, the whole load on the trailer will be on the axle that's on the bump in the moment. So can't run it like that. So what I'm gonna do, I got a piece of one inch tubing right here. I'm gonna use it as a spacer to figure out where to be. I'm gonna jack it up and sit that tubing on top of there and I'm gonna put one inch and that'll give me just a little bit of room for my center link to be able to rotate, let everything work. I think, yeah. There we go. I think I need to grease everything. All right. Okay. Sit that in the middle. All right. So, sit that weight down on that. All right, we are in the middle and I'm gonna figure out where my center link hole is and I am going to drill it, put the bolt back in, do the other side. Cutting fluid, folks. That's the life of a drill bit. All right, we are re-drilled. Let's grease this thing up, make it happen. Probably need to I probably need to just break it all down, grease everything. Probably will before it's over. Yeah, you believe that, right? No, I'll grease it all. I gotta pull the bands, do all that. We're not gonna do that in this episode. We're just gonna get this thing to sit where it's supposed to. Let's see, where are we at? Oh, we're getting close. Damn. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, that looks, that's pretty dang good close right there. Y'all, I had turned the camera off and whoop on that joker for a minute. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit cocked. I drilled straight, but I think it's probably where the axle's just a little bit out of alignment me. I haven't jacked up. I got her. Well, it's an improvement. I, I'm glad I did it and everything, but I didn't get as much as I wanted. I flipped the ball over on the truck, flipped the hitch around, stuck the ball back in, which I measured and it dropped it three inches. The actual hole where I drilled it was three and a half inches up is where I ended up drilling it. And that is at the end of the leaf. So you're picking one end of the leaf up. So realistically, I dropped those axles like an inch and three quarters is what I dropped them. And so overall, about two, two and a quarter average inches of drop in that trailer. Um, not really enough that I'm not, I'm not going to recut. I said I was going to recut the dovetail, but... Um, I'm gonna load a car and look at it, but it looks like I just don't need to recut the dovetail. May get me where I need to as far as not having to use the ramps. I would just run into, like at some tracks and some cases, I was needing to put an extra set of ramps there to keep my nose from hanging up. And so I always had to take the ramps with me. So it may get me where I need to be. If it doesn't, I'll have to go back and work on it some more. But for today, that's gonna be it. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna oil those boards down, put them back on, and I think I'm gonna put some latex paint on my piece of plywood on the back right there, flip it over where I can get several more years out of it, and weld it all up, and Kim says I should paint it black. I, you know, I like red. I got some red. I think I'm just gonna repaint it red. She'll get over it. Anyway, so, um, I know this isn't working on a street stock, but it is the dirt race life and gotta have a trailer. So, hey, and if you're not subscribed folks, subscribe. It's just that button right in the corner. See you next time.